am delighted to participate in this debate and I would like to thank the Noble Lord, Lord Miners, for promoting this debate. Can I bring attention <coughs> to my uh, registered member's interest of being a director of NBNK Investment Company, uh, which is one of the companies looking to acquire banks? My Lords, the South Sea bubble stock, one of them was entitled A Company for the Carrying Out of an Undertaking of Great Advantage, but Nobody to Know What It Is. More of the evidence I heard as Chairman of the Treasury Committee over the years convinced me that uh, on 400 years on from 1620, quite a lot of banking philosophy in practice was characterised by that. Essentially, privatisation of profits and socialisation of losses has to give way to a more democratically functioning market system, a system which is more aware of its wider social responsibilities. Now, I am aware that we will never be able to eliminate risk in future financial crises, but taxpayers should not be required to come to the rescue again. And Vickers is very clear on this when he said that the risks associated with banking have to hit, sit somewhere, but it should not be with taxpayers. That is why structural change is essential, to make UK banking <coughs> more resilient. And it is in that vein that I welcome Vickers. I am very much aware that there are issues it will not tackle. For example, it will not be able to, to tackle the issue of too big to fail. It will not be able to tackle the issue of cross-border resolution, particularly in Europe at the moment. But it has made a stab at this. The characteristics of the financial crisis were quite simply complexity, extreme risk-taking and lack of corporate governance. And they characterised quite large parts of the industry. Now, Vickers, I think, provides a blueprint for a national debate, but not only a national debate, but also an international debate. And I have described it as a game changer. But what is the game? Because there is still a lot to fill in in this area. Is it, as Philip Stevens said in the Financial Times this week, a victory to the banker shop steward Bob Diamond, whom he compared with Bob Crow? Or in the fine appreciation of wine and food, that's in that area, he said. Uh, or is it a real game changer? And the core issue is the ring fence. Is the ring fence an impervious wall, or is it one with multiple gateways which are easily passable? That's the issue for us as politicians and policy makers to look at. Now, as the noble Lord, Lord Miners has said, 2019 is an awfully long period of time away. And if we part this, even for a year or two in Parliament, then it's going to lose its potency. Presently, we have a draft bill before us, Financial Services Bill. And I would suggest, after talking informally to the regulator, the Bank of England and others, it's so complex they need to go on with issues. So we need to put some elements into that draft bill. But if we're going to have a bill on its own, there has to be a commitment from the front bench that in the next Queen's speech there will be a financial bill taking this on. And I think we need that for clarity for politicians. We need it clarity for the industry on that issue, that particular point on that. Now, the issues of objectives of the new bodies that we are discussing upstairs with that bill at the moment, uh, whether the Financial Conduct Authority competition is its primary objective, I think that can all be reduced. I think the primary objective for all these bodies is a fair and tra transparent market for, that, for financial services, which leads to confidence in it. Don't say you have to establish confidence without the ingredients for confidence. And the transparency of that market is very important. And if we've got to change that, then we've got to tackle the culture of the market. And if I had to say that Vickers missed anything, it was looking at the issue of culture and governance. I happen to be a member of the Future of Banking Commission, which I established along with David Davis, the former Shadow Home Secretary, Vince Cable, now the Business Secretary, Claire Spottiswood, who is on the Future of Banking Commission, Roger Bootle and others. And surprisingly, we had as one of our advisers Father Christopher Jamison, 
the former Abbot of Worth, because if we wanted a wider concept of society in terms of culture, in terms of philosophy of banking, and that proved to be very, very important. And one of our witnesses was the noble Lord, Lord Green, when he was chairman of HSBC, and he said it quite succinctly. He said, it is as if, too often, people had given up asking whether something was the right thing to do and focused only on whether it was legal and complied with the rules. And in that report, which we did pro bono, eh, we suggested a code of conduct for the banking industry in a new professional industrial body, along the lines of the General Medical Council or the Legal Services Board. And if there are bankers and the, uh, individuals who are engaging in this conduct, then they can be struck off. And I think if banking wants to be seen as professional, then it has to step up to the plate on that issue. During our inquiry, we looked at the issue of culture and ethics. Culture being behaviour and ethics being how to negotiate conflicts of interest. And we got a very interesting response from Goldman Sachs in its ethics code. And Goldman Sachs said in its ethics code, integrity and honesty are at the heart of our business. <clears throat> we expect our people to maintain high ethical standards in everything they do, in their work for the firm, and in their private lives, and hear, hear to that. But, ominously, there was a rider which said, from time to time, the firm may waive certain procedures of this code. Now, my lords, we do not want an opt-out. And so here we have fine words, and it's for us as legislators to look at the fine words and see what it means, put it under a microscope and say what is that and what will that mean in practice. Because it is only culture and behaviour that will change the financial services industry in the long term. And it has to adopt this. And if I've got a plea, it's for companies who are presently as a result of Vickers looking at their business models at the moment to incorporate that issue of culture and ethics. But behind Vickers, we've got to ask the question, what will it do for jobs and growth? That is a shadow that is overhanging us here at the moment. The prosperity of society is behind all this. And I would remind my noble lords that economic prosperity, social stability go hand in hand. And if we forget this, we get one, but we damage the other and damage society at that time. And we cannot afford this. Yeah.